So by now, I am certain that you've already heard the good news, but Kansas voters gave forced birthers a reality check when they voted overwhelmingly against amending their constitution to remove protections for abortion rights. And I want to share this video clip of voters reacting to them defeating this ballot initiative because this was really heartwarming. <laughs> You know, we have uh, worked so hard for the past um, year, but the you know, last couple of months to really, um, you know, communicate with voters about what, this, what is at stake and really what, it, what was at stake was our constitutional rights and our freedom. And so, um, you know, a coalition of voters across the political spectrum came together today and voted no. They voted no um, to protect their neighbors. Um, they voted no on changing the Constitution um, and really, um, you know, demonstrated our free state roots super proud to be from Kansas tonight, and I feel like my state just showed up and boldly told me that they are going to take care of me and my female friends and everyone that can get pregnant in the state of Kansas. We are protected tonight. You love to see that. But at the same time, as heartwarming as that video is, um, I can't help but feel really infuriated about the fact that women are still having to do this in 2022. This was a settled issue, but Republicans just couldn't let it go, and they decided that they want to intervene in women's lives, and now women once again are forced to be in this position to where they have to fight th for their own bodily autonomy, and that's infuriating, but at the same time, I don't want to take away from this victory. This is really huge news, and as Emma Viglin puts it, Kansas should be proud today. Even before Roe was overturned, nearly half of all abortions performed in Kansas were for out-of-state individuals due to already draconian red state restrictions. Kansas cements itself as an oasis for border states like Missouri and Nebraska. And that is absolutely correct. Now, if you're one of the conservatives, if you're a forced birther who likes to hate watch this channel and you're perplexed as to why this ballot uh, initiative didn't go your way, stories like this like the one we're about to read now, explain why it didn't go your way. As the New York Times explains, Madison Underwood was lying on the ultrasound table nearly 19 weeks pregnant when the doctor came in to say to her that her abortion had been canceled. Nurses followed and started wiping away lukewarm sonogram gel from her exposed belly as the doctor leaned over her shoulder to speak to her fiancé, Adam Queen. She recalled that she went quiet. Her body went still. What did they mean? They couldn't do the abortion. Just two weeks earlier, she and her fiancé had learned her fetus had a condition that would not allow it to survive outside the womb. If she tried to carry it to term, she could become critically ill or even die, her doctor had said. Now she was being told she couldn't have an abortion she didn't even want but needed. Quote, they're just going to let me die? She remembers wondering. Tennessee allows abortion if a woman's life is in danger, but doctors feared making those decisions too soon and facing prosecution. Across the country, the legal landscape was shifting so quickly, some abortion clinics turned patients away before the laws officially took effect or while legal legal battles played out in state courts. Now, we're talking about a young woman here who did not want to have an abortion. She was ecstatic about the prospect of one day becoming a mother. But because of unfortunate circumstances, this was the situation that she found herself in. The fetus was not viable. Its skull did not develop, and brain fluid was leaking into the umbilic sac, which would lead to an infection that would cause sepsis, which would threaten her life. So she decided to end the pregnancy. But she couldn't. Because at that time, the law was changing. The decision to overturn Roe v. Wade was announced. Now, this just goes to show you that these exceptions for the life of the mother, they're not actually adequate. Because these are usually ill-defined legal gray areas, and the doctors usually just choose to play it safe, right? Or in some instances, as we've seen in Texas, for example, they just... Uh, force the woman to provide them with an overwhelming amount of evidence in the event they are prosecuted. So, okay, the fetus is dead. Get an ultrasound. One more ultrasound. Okay, one more ultrasound just to be sure. This is what these exceptions for the life of the mother still put women through. They need full control over their bodies. So because she couldn't get an abortion in her state, what did she do? Well, the doctor recommended a clinic in Georgia, but there's some problems with that. For example, 
Quote, how would her fiance get the time off work to make the trip? How would they come up with the hotel and gas money? How long did she have until she herself became ill? A new, more terrifying question hit her. What if she felt a kick? As stress on the couple mounted, Mr. Queen quit his job to take care of Miss Underwood. His mother raised $5,250 to help with travel costs from the crowdfunding website GoFundMe. The cash would also help pay for the fetus's cremation. Now, the reason why feeling the fetus kick for the first time was so terrifying to her was because she did not want to have an abortion. She wanted a healthy baby. So that would just add trauma, knowing that, you know, this could have been something that she wanted. She could have been a mother, but it wasn't possible. So, you know, these were things that were going through her mind. Now, her parents, even though they were ultimately supportive, they disagreed with her and they actually thought that she should risk her life to have the baby just so that way she can meet the baby and hold it for a few minutes before it dies. Now, if that were my child, that's not what I would say. I, I would prioritize the health of my daughter, but that's not what they said. They ultimately, you know, they agreed that she should be able to do whatever she wanted, but they didn't think she was making the right decision. They wanted her to risk her life. But still, even if they ultimately sided with their daughter, they were confronted with the forced birther at the abortion clinic when they ultimately arrived in Georgia. And this exchange that her forced birther mother had with other forced birthers who were presumably more extreme really speaks to how unreasonable these forced birthers are. The Georgia clinic staff warned the family about protesters outside. As they pulled into the parking lot, they drove by a man with signs showing dead fetuses. Are all of you okay with killing babies? He shouted into a megaphone. He approached Mrs. Underwood's parents' car and her mother rolled down the window. Quote, we're on the same side as you. Her mother said, we don't support abortion, but the doctor said our baby is going to die. Quote, you trust the doctors more than God? He replied, wow. So there is no getting through to them. Yes, we should trust the doctors more than God because doctors exist and God does not. He says that as if it's just common sense to assume that everything is going to be all right. Has he not heard of stillborn births? Has he not heard of miscarriages? Again, he was speaking to somebody who agreed with him. She stated she agreed with him as he was yelling at her daughter as she had to put on headphones to go into the abortion clinic to drown out the protests. But this individual, still, nothing would resonate with him. And the mother agreed. She thought that her daughter should risk her life to have a baby also she can meet the baby. But the daughter didn't want to do that because obviously that'd be more traumatic. Like she, she fell in love with the idea of becoming a mother. She didn't want to meet her baby, fall in love with it and then say goodbye immediately. I, I mean, that's so cruel. That's trauma on top of trauma. So, I mean, you can see how this woman's mother is far more reasonable than that forced birther who was protesting outside of the clinic because even she acknowledged that the baby wasn't going to make it, but he just thought, no, 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 risk it. Doesn't matter. I don't care about the circumstances. You always have the baby, no matter what. We prioritize the fetus over the mother's health. It's just truly ridiculous. So it goes to show you how unreasonable they are. But the reason why the Kansas story is so important is because it reminds everyone that not everyone is as reason uh, unreasonable as that individual. Most Americans, even in deep red states, are not that unreasonable. Most people acknowledge that women must control their own reproductive health. Getting an abortion isn't as simple as, oh, well, I changed my mind. I don't want the baby anymore. Sure, maybe that's the case sometimes, but a lot of times we're seeing these horror stories about the way that abortion outlaws are affecting women who have miscarriages or women who have fatal fetal uh, defects and the pregnancy poses a risk to their own life. Like, we see the way that this affects women in a multitude of ways. So to still support these bans after you see how disastrous they are speaks to how unreasonable you are. So if you are against women controlling their own bodies, congratulations, you're fringe. You're part of the small minority of the American population that wants to impose their minoritarian views on everyone else. But as you can see, voters are rejecting what you have to say.